I'm going to get started on uh, the power wiring for this RS switch. If you were watching closely in the last 30 seconds or so, maybe a minute, of part one, you would have seen that these are hooked up incorrectly. So I'll rectify that problem and I'll proceed with the uh, power wiring. To that end I finished the front panel. I've got a power switch, an antenna selector, and an LED power indicator. The LEDs held in with one of these bezel assemblies. Uh, you stick the LED in, you stick this plastic in. This black heat shrink contains a 270 ohm series resistor to limit the current to this LED. I completed wiring on this uh, antenna selector. Turning it off turns off everything, including the two amplifiers. I think that's Spanish, but I can't tell. And right now it's got a S4 signal. I'll switch directions. Right now it has about an S3. And that gives it an S5. Down to S3. Up to S5. This is a short wave station at 7.332 megahertz. I have no idea what it is, I just found it. And I'm listening to it on a Yesu FRG880. So there we go. When I connect the output from the res this uh, bias T to my receiver directly bypassing this switch, I get a nice WWV signal. It's a little bit noisy, but it works. When I reconnect it to this bias T, I get nothing. I have another, well, I have quite a few of these switching kits that I got from Banggood. Unfortunately, they're another drill pattern, but I can certainly just put it in and see if it works. I'm not very happy with the way this antenna selector switch works. So I've removed this module, which is, which was, this module. Uh, $13. Switch is an analog devices, uh, single pole double throw, DC to 4 gigahertz. Now that's not quite right because although there are no capacitors shown here, there are capacitors in the uh, termination of the unused input, whichever that happens to be. DC blocks are required at all ports. In other words, I'm supposed to insert a capacitor in series with RF1, RF2, and RFC. 
which are the ins and the two outs. Well, with a capacitor, it can't be a DC device. And more importantly, the size of the capacitor determines the frequency range it's going to operate at. The bigger the capacitor, the lower the frequency range. I intend to check out this device. Looks about the same. It's physically a little bit smaller in all dimensions. It was sold on this. Again, this is the description of what's inside this box. That has nothing to do with this. And Banggood says this has a frequency response of 300 kilohertz to 3 gigahertz. This device made by Skyworks and they advertise this 20 megahertz to 4 gigahertz. Now the predecessor to this was this 179-92. The LF is supposed to be an identical replacement. The 92 was described as a DC to I think 6 gigahertz device. This is identified as 20 to 4 gigahertz. Same style. Now it doesn't have terminating devices, it just leaves the unused input unterminated. Here's Skyworks recommended wiring diagram and you'll notice that the inputs or and or output, whichever way you're feeding it, are all have a capacitor. As I said I'm going to replace this is my original uh, switch I'm going to replace it with this, which is physically a little bit smaller. Just enough to screw up the mounting holes. I intend to remove this metal cap to find out just whether there are capacitors in there. And if so, I want to measure them. So we don't have just three capacitors, we have five capacitors. We've got one capacitor on this input, one capacitor on this input, and one capacitor on this input, or output, depending on how, how this thing's wired up. Then we have a capacitor across these two pins. Or if you desire to put an SMA connector across the center pin and ground. These are power pins. That is, they're powered or, or not powered depending on which way we want to make the relay flop. I'm going to measure the capacitors. Uh, this will be a, one of the inputs or outputs, depending on what you do with it. Uh, 0.1 nanofarad. And this will be one of the bypass capacitors. Uh, it's also a 0.1 nanofarad. I'll go right across the chip. Let's see. 0.1. Here is another input output point one. So I'm going to say they're all point 0.1 nanofarads. And by the way this little tool is a you can see it's a mass tech and it's their model 8910. This will do resistance, capacitance, and diodes. It will auto range that is scan as well as auto range.
It will not do inductors. VCQ out of Maine. I have the receiver hooked directly to this uh, bias T. I bypassed this little switching device. I put in the AliExpress switch. I've received nothing in the receiver through either of these switches. But if I hook the antenna directly to the uh, bias T, I, I get a usable signal. Not a great signal, but... Now, it's uh, 4.30 p.m. Eastern Time in my location in Altoona, Pennsylvania. WBCQ is on 7.49 megahertz. And right now I'm using the north-south antenna. So I'm going to try increasing the capacitor size on this device. Now remember the, uh, the eBay device, DC to 4000 megahertz. I don't believe that's true. The switch itself is rated DC to above 4. But it requires blocking capacitors on these three connections. So it cannot be DC in service. I could do, since I, my receiver only receives 30 megahertz tops, I could actually just get rid of this thing and use the antenna selector switch to switch coax. This switch will handle 30. It certainly will handle 10 megahertz. I may do that, but first I want to try some larger capacitors. If I can get this thing working, I'll provide a set of drawings uh, for front and rear panels and the case layout. Benefit of the doubt for months. And then I didn't anymore because he had not earned it. He had lost the benefit of the doubt. But the media, again, nor experts, the people you're supposed to trust, because here's the thing, in, when you live in a complex... That was WRTA, uh, a 1KW AM station on uh, 1.24 megahertz. Again, through this switch, through either one of these switches, I could not receive a one and a quarter megahertz RF signal. The loop antenna does well. I can't easily compare the two. I have to switch these little coaxes around. Well, switch this coax from this bias T to this bias T. But not based on the repeat repeatability of the I'm gonna turn the power yeah. off. Or because it was a CNN, it was custom game and news. According to Google. And then they say, well, you know what, if you don't trust us, it's because you deny the power of journalism. If Donald Trump declared you guys the fake news because it turns out the time where you guys do is just express your own opinion and put narratives that are false, well, then he must be conflicting with 